Welcome to Loving Truth. We're still looking at Psalm 46 and trying to draw from it all the spiritual nourishment we can. Actually, you could spend months and months on this psalm and never exhaust its truth. We're only spending a week, but I do hope that it's going to be a blessing to you. Sometimes the core of course of a song is what we remember most about the song. And here the chorus, the refrain, is mentioned twice in verse 7 and in verse 11. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Or listen to it in the New Living Translation. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us, and the God of Israel is our fortress. Because God is our place of safety, he gives us help. The presence of God gives us help. The presence of God gives us joy. He makes glad the city of God. The presence of God gives us safety, a refuge. The presence of God gives us peace. We can quiet our hearts to be still and know that he is God. And the presence of God gives us hope. For the nations who rebel against him will be brought low. They will crumble and fall. Every kingdom will have its day of ruin. And the kingdom of God, literally established on the earth, will be forever. God Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. You can think about the time when this song was written, probably when the Assyrians were surrounding the city of Jerusalem. And Sennacherib, the king of the Assyrians, had made threats threats against Hezekiah, the king of Jerusalem and Judah. He surrounded him and called Hezekiah a caged bird. And through his soldiers, they warned the people in Jerusalem, don't trust Hezekiah, don't trust his God. What other God of the nations has delivered their nation from our control? So Hezekiah said to Isaiah the prophet, what should we do? And the prophet said, God is with you. He's your refuge. He will deliver you. And overnight, the angel of the Lord came through and 185,000 soldiers in the Assyrian army were killed. And the people of God woke up the next day to see dead bodies all around the city. And King Sennacherib fled. That's a picture of what will happen, as the scriptures tell us here, uh, looking at uh, verse 8, come and see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow. He snaps the spear. He burns the shield with fire. Quiet your soul. Be still and know that God is God. He will be honored in every nation. He will be honored throughout the world. And the God of heaven's army is the place where we dwell in safety. We said already that he was an ever-present help in trouble. That's verse 1. He's our dwelling place in verse 1. Just like it says in Acts 17, in him we live and move and have our being. God is our atmosphere. He's also the most high God described in verse 4. There's the city of God, which was the earthly Jerusalem, but will be the heavenly Jerusalem, Mount Zion, as described in the book of Hebrews. And then the chorus repeated twice, God Almighty is with us. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. It was John Wesley who said, the, the best of all is simply this, God is with us. You might remember the verse from Matthew chapter 1 when Jesus was born and the angel was convincing Joseph that Mary's pregnancy really was of God, that she was carrying the Son of God. She was still a virgin, but she was going to give birth to the Messiah. His name will be called Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And that's the fact that he is the covenant God who's made promise to all who put their faith and trust in him to save them and deliver them. But then it said in Matthew 1, all this happened to fulfill what Isaiah said, that a virgin will conceive and bear a son and God will be with us. His name will be called Emmanuel, 
which means God with us. Exactly what this psalm declares. The Lord Almighty is with us, and he is our place of safety. I would encourage you to pause, to think about what this psalm has to say, and to make sure that you're trusting in God for your place of safety, that you're trusting in the work of Christ upon the cross for your salvation, and today that you will live without fear of man as you submit to the wonderful reverential trust and fear of God. Heavenly Father, thank you for your encouraging word today. May our hearts be emboldened as we trust you. In Jesus' name, amen.